What is up, everybody? Welcome to our Real Faith Podcast here. So thankful that you're tuning in today. And today is a special day. We got a special guest on the podcast, Tyler Gramling from Potential Church, also a TIU alum. How are we doing today, Tyler? I am doing great. So honored to be here. And yes, I'm a TIU alumni and uh, proud to be so. And I'm looking forward to the conversation today. Yes, and it's not just that. He's also my brother in love. Come on, married to my sister. So we got a family podcast here and we got Jamie, my wife. She's always making us look better, sounding better. Come on. How you doing? I'm good. That's my job in life. You ready? Ready. Well, we're thankful that you're here today and we're all pastors in the local South Florida area. And we just thought it would be great today to talk about the importance of the church. Yeah. We are church kids uh, pastor Tyler is a pastor's kid. Um, I was raised in the church. Jamie was raised in the church. We met in the church. Uh, Tyler met my sister in the church, got married. So we love the church and we have given our lives to the church. And today we want to talk about how to have real faith, but using the church because the church is very important. And I believe, uh, there's, uh, a lot of things going on today where it's, hey, I can love Jesus, but I don't need the church. Yeah, I can follow Jesus. Me and Jesus are great on Sunday through uh, uh, Saturday, but I don't need any other time. So I want to dive in today. I want to give a couple stats uh, and then we'll dive in and have a conversation um, because this is uh, alarming in 2023 that we have this going on, and especially when the Bible says that the church, uh, Jesus is the head of the church, and we are the body. 40 million Americans have stopped attending church in the past 25 years. These are some crazy stats. That's something like 12% of the population, and it represents the largest uh, concentrated change in church attendance in American history. That's crazy. So since... The last 25 years, 40 million Americans have stopped going. 20% of Americans attend church every week. 41% of Americans are in monthly church attendance. Um, And 57% of Americans um, seldom never go. Uh, Regular church attendance has steadily declined in the last century. Now, this is a stat right here. Average church attendance is every six weeks which is eight times a year. Wow. Mm. So people are not going Mm. and they're not being a part of the body of Christ. Um, And 16% of uh, Christians who attended church pre uh, pandemic have stopped attending all entirely. And then there's this group that say, I love Jesus, but I don't go to church. And that makes up one tenth of the population, which is up from 7% Mm. in 2004. So, as we dive in today and we talk about the church, one, I love the church. I am, I, I've been helped by the church. I've been hurt by the church. We've all, there's people, there's broken people in the church, but I still believe that the church is the hope of the world. Yeah. We are church kids. We believe that we're pastors, not, not necessarily pastors because we had to be, but because God called us to be. Yeah. So I still love the church. Pastor Tyler, tell us a little bit about kind of your journey, how you came up in the church and how you've had it, you've experienced the church. Cause it's always good because it's all, people always ask, well, you're a pastor. You have to love the church. Yeah. You're a pastor. You need like, it's just like they pay you to be here yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So tell us a little bit about your experience and, and the, 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 the mindset around, uh, we, we love the church and, and we need the church. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Like you mentioned, uh, my parents have pastored since I've been born. I don't know what life 
looks like to not be in church. I have been in church um, every weekend of my life. And, you know, of course, as a child, you go through those seasons, those rebellious phases where you're like, oh, I don't want to be in church. This is lame. I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a pastor. You know, I don't want to carry on the family (laughs) business kind of thing. But I remember um, being in high school and it was after a mission trip and God just got a hold of my heart. And I really fell in love with the ministry. And I think I fell in love with it because it was a, it was our lifestyle, you know, um, getting to see the good, the bad, the difficult, um, it, but, and being able to be a part of it. I feel like my parents did a a great job of just including the family in the ministry and they made it fun and they made it an adventure. And we talked about the stories of life change and we talked about seeing what God is doing in the life of the church and the lives of the people that were, were coming and being transformed. And I just fell in love with that aspect of it. And I really feel like the church, I mean, even though I grew up in a, in a, pastor's home, life was not perfect. You know, I accepted Christ at the age of seven years old, but from the age of seven, I've also had thoughts of suicide, you know, like yeah. life, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't mean, oh, you're in church and you know, you're saved and life is just easy for you. And I think that I, I attribute so much to the local church of why I'm still here today, why I didn't make the decision to take my own life, why I have yeah. stayed close to Christ. It wasn't just growing up in a Christian home, but being a part of a Christian community, um, that has me where I am today. That's so good. Yeah, I would say kind of similar to to my story. Um, I grew up going to church, and then my parents got a divorce when I was around 14 years old. And I remember my mom, um, who was still kind of in church, and my dad wasn't, saying to my dad, like, I got to get them around some good people and good influences. And the first place she thought of to take us was the church. And that was where actually we had, I met Corey and Tyler. There was at the church, and I think that, um, that was such a pivotal time in my life that I could have chose to, um, you know, go with friends or choose ways of the world. And, you know, my parents, my whole life was changing as I knew it. So I could have sought that validation in other spaces, but I got brought to a church where people poured into me. They showed me love. They showed me value. Our youth pastor married us. And he was the first person that day when I got there who sat on the bench with me and said, I'll go in with you. It's my first weekend too. And I was like, what do you mean? I thought you were the pastor, but it was his first weekend on staff. And he took me by the hand. And I know that that one moment forever changed my life. And then when I got Um, the opportunity to begin serving and being a part and deciding what I was going to give the rest of my life to. I just think I found so much purpose behind what we were doing. Um, It wasn't just the task for the task sake, but we were helping people experience the very same thing that I experienced, the love of Jesus and turning from the ways of the world and a different way of doing things that I just wanted everybody to know that and everybody to experience that and everybody to be a part of that, that when it came time for me to make that decision, it was like, yeah, I want to give my life to be a part of this imperfections, beauty and all, you know. Right. And, and I think you've heard it from us. Like the church has made an impact in our life. And if you are out there listening, it's probably made an impact in your life as well. Um, it's made an impact for good. And in mine, it has hurt you. Mm-hmm. And because there's people in church that aren't perfect. And I think that's what we misunderstand understand is that, oh, well, I... I can't go to the church because I'm hurt by the church. So I will not, you know, someone said something about me or someone said something to me or whatever. I was hurt. So I'm not going to go back. But Jesus died for every single person. Yeah. And Jesus is the head of the church. Look at what it says. Colossians. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. And I love how it says Jesus is the head. And it represents the church as the body. So if you say, I can have Jesus without the church, you will have no body. Yeah. Mm. You, there's, there's, you ever just see, you know, Halloween's coming up like, hey, there's no head or there's no body. Yeah. That's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I think a lot of us, we want, we want to, to pick at what's wrong about the church. But I, I do believe that the church is not about us. It's about what God can do through us. Mm-hmm. And I think where we're getting it wrong in this generation is because we got offended. We will not be able to step into and, and build the church and be a part of it because uh, it hurt us. So 
what, how can we, what do you say to, to someone who says, well, I, I got Jesus, I'm good, and I don't really need the church, you know, I don't really agree with the church organization, I don't agree with some of the things that are going on, I don't uh, do that. What do you say to them? Why, why do we need the body of Christ? Yeah. Why do we need the body of Christ? I mean, I think you, you touched on it when you said that we, um, it's not about what God wants to do in us, but through us. Yeah. And I think so many times we get caught acting like consumers when God's called us to be contributors. Like Come God on. wants to partner yeah. with us to spread the gospel message across yeah, the I earth. I mean, he could have done it any other way, yeah. but he chose for us to be a part of it. And like, us, like as yeah. messed up as we are, as jacked up as we are, like God wants to use us. And I think when we get caught in that consumer mentality, mm-hmm. um, then it becomes about us and the church meeting yeah. our need as opposed to, okay, you know what? I'm going to show up and see how I can meet the needs of others. And that's the life that Christ modeled out for us. His example of ministry was serving people and, um, and, and being involved in their life, like being a part of community and pointing them back to the, the, the case for the gospel. And I think the greatest opportunity we have to do that is within the local church because people are showing up seeking help, asking questions. Yeah, you can do it outside the four walls. And and I believe that that's possible, but the greatest opportunity to fulfill the great commission is, um, to evangelize and to teach people the commands of God is in the context of the local church. So we've got yeah. to get out of that consumerism mentality and more into that contributor mentality. That's good. Yeah. I would also say one of the biggest pieces that I think we miss as Christ followers is just our example as a whole. Like if we cannot learn how to get along with each other and model grace and love and forgiveness, then who in this world is going to? Because our world is so messed up left and right. And here we are in the church doing the very same things that political parties, businesses, other things, other people are doing. So Why would an unbeliever look at us at the church and be like, I need that. I want that. I want to be a part of that. They're not looking at us like that. They're looking at us like you're jacked up as much as I am. So why am I going to put myself out there and go to something else? And I think we miss such a huge opportunity to just model grace and love and forgiveness and truly living like Jesus inside the church as an example of like, this is why you want Jesus in your life because he can transform you. He can change you. He can turn situations around. Like, I mean, I know I experienced it in my own life. You know, my parents are divorced. I said that earlier, but now almost 25 years later, my mom, my dad, and my stepmom are really good friends. And that comes down to one thing only grace and forgiveness. Mm, And if we claim to be Christ followers, but never model that out, who are we? Like we are living just like the world and God called us to live set apart. Mm. And I think it's the perfect example or opportunity amongst the church to sit down and have real truth filled conversations with one another, shake each other's hand and move on. And that's how we live out the gospel right in front of people. But we miss that so much because we're too worried about whatever our pride ourself or this or that so i think we all like you were saying have a responsibility in that um not just to be a consumer but i'm going i have a responsibility to hold this to the highest standard like christ as as i humanly possibly can during this so yeah that's that's so good so good because i i think we miss out thinking the church is somewhere where we go no it's who we are and i think it is right here in scripture in acts the the early church that's that's what they did all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship and sharing in meals including the lord's prayer and they had a deep sense of awe came over them and they were pre- able to perform many miraculous signs and wonders and each day the lord added to their fellowship those being saved they were to devoted to getting together in community. This is the church. It's not uh, we go to a building and we go and we do all those things. No, they were devoted to each other and they shared in meals and they did this and they made a commitment to each other. And that's the, the responsibility as a Christ follower that I'm going to be, be devoted to each other. And that's the, I'm going to be devoted to the community. And the question we ask you is, are you devoted to the church? Are you devoted to yourself? Because the church is important. You need the church. We need the church because the church is the place, like you said, where we can, Jesus is everywhere, but it just says when two or three are gathered, 
the, the powers there, miraculous mm. signs and wonders. I yeah. believe we're missing out in, on our lives mm. because we're not seeing mir- miracles and wonders happen is because we're not plugged in to the church. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. So, I think I can share something we just experienced <clears throat> as a church in our church is we had a lady who um, had cancer come back again. And, you know, through prayer through anointing with oil, through praying over her. She's four months into her cancer journey, and she's completely cancer-free. Mm. And talking to her last night, somebody said, asked her the question, like, how did you get through this? And her answer was, my community. Mm. As perfect and imperfect as it is, yeah. it was my community. They were there every Tuesday with a meal. When I needed a phone call, the Holy Spirit led somebody to call me. And she just could not express more the power of what you're talking about there. She was able to see something because she leaned into that community of her church body. She wanted to see miraculous signs and wonders and wanted our, her healing to happen in her body. And I think all of us have similar situations in our life. We want to see miraculous signs and wonders. We want to see God do big things in our lives and in our families, but we're missing out on the kind of helpmate to that, the church, to help make that happen. Yeah. I know as a mother... My kid don't listen to me. She thinks I don't, you know, even at five, you don't know nothing, mom. What do you mean? That is not how my teacher told me. Like, you know, so the biggest thing that I can do is get her in front of people who are speaking and believing the very same thing that I am. The church is meant to partner with us in that and bring help to me in that. So I can see miraculous signs and wonders in her life. I can see her know the Lord and go after, um, whatever God has called her to do one day. Um, That's good. That's amazing. I think too, you know, we've talked about it, the the local church is an opportunity to exercise forgiveness and grace, right? Because even though the bride of Christ is not perfect, she's still beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I also think a lot of times we think that God's going to accept the answer that we're hurt by the church as an acceptable excuse Mm. for not being engaged in community. We're talking about his bride, you know, he's not going to accept that as an excuse. And I think a lot of times we got to be careful about not getting godly accountability confused with church hurt Mm. because godly accountability isn't church hurt. Those are people that see the best in us and are calling the best forward. And I know I need that in my life. Like one of the greatest values of the local church is the accountability I receive because I'm not good enough on my own to fulfill what God's called me to do. Like I'm I'm not, I'm just not that good. I need people in my life that are going to call me out Mm -hmm. that are going to, when they see behavior that conflicts with the calling that God has on my life. And I, right, we've got to be sensitive to that. And if you're not a part of community, you're going to become defensive to this godly critique that can actually benefit you and get you to where God's called you to be. So I think that's a huge benefit for me personally. It has helped me become more sensitive to godly critique and accountability so that I can keep growing towards who God's called me to be. That's so good. What are some um, ways let's let's get a little bit practical here. You know, we talk about devoted and, you know, kind of this is why the church is important, but what are some ways, you know, it says in Hebrews, do not neglect the meeting together. What are some things we can do to make church a priority? You know, as pastors, we're always trying to think about how do we get people here and how do we get them all on the same Sunday, (laughs) right? We're all thinking about that. How do we get them here? How do we, the beach and this and that and all this stuff that is distracting. What are some practical, if they're listening, how, how do I get, you know, how do we get people devoted to the church? How can someone become devoted to the church and step up their level? Yeah, I think one, making the decision to serve. Like I'm a big agent of a lot of times we get very nervous around that because we think, oh, I don't have the gifts and everybody who serves at the church knows everything about the Bible and they're just all perfect. And I'm so unqualified. We hear that all the time. And I encourage people, no, we're all, we, none of, no one knows what we're doing. We're all (laughs) faithful people just showing up, trying to do our best. So Uh show up and give your best, you know, and whatever ministry that's in, whether it's with kids or, you know, standing at the door greeting, but serving is that commitment because then you're going to be a part of community, right? We always say, we're not looking for bodies at doors. We are looking for people that are going to integrate into a community. Now you're part of community. You get that accountability, but then there's also that you get scheduled. So like on those weeks where you don't feel like showing up, but somebody's, (laughs) Hey, 
you're invited to come serve. Right. Hey, if that's what it takes, just getting it on your calendar and making yeah. a commitment and sticking to it, even when you don't feel like it. Uh, one of the things we teach in our growth track, and, and I say all the time, listen, we're going to teach you some things about the Bible, but to be honest with you, you're not going to receive anything if all you did was come to a class and sit in a yeah. room and then go back to a seat. We don't grow in mm-hmm. rows. We grow in circles. Yeah. And so our goal from growth track, enter a serve <clears throat> ministry or join a connect group, because that is where you're going to exercise what you're learning. Mm-hmm. So put yourself in an environment that allows you to exercise what you're learning. I think serving is a great way to do that. That's good. That's good. What'd I would say, say if you're not plugged into a local church, find one. Mm-hmm. There's so many in South Florida, all different sizes, styles, flair. Find one. And we're all the body of Christ. And we're all yeah. running after the same thing. But don't go looking for a perfect one because yeah. I promise you, you're not going to find that. And no. you'll you'll hop like. around until you, and find it and you'll still be hopping. Yeah, and yeah. you'll still be looking because none of us are perfect. <laughs> yeah. We're all the, out there trying our best to reach people for the gospel. So find one that you can align with their mission, their vision. And like Pastor Tyler said, get plugged in because I sit on the opposite ends of so many conversations week in, week out. People who come through the doors of our church connect with me. We do coffee and they're always like, I just need friends. I'm looking for community. Well, be that. Be okay being a little bit uncomfortable yeah. for a little bit. It's, you know, finding a new friendship, a new relationship, whatever it is. It's a little uncomfortable at mm-hmm. first, but yeah. lean into that. That is where I believe God That's will good. grow you and he will give you the desires of your heart when you're okay enough to lean into the uncomfortability of showing up somebody somewhere new, maybe not knowing somebody, sending the first text. Like we all go through that, even us as pastors, yeah. we all experience that, but lean into the uncomfortability and and allow God to to fill in those spaces and watch what he does after so that. So good. That's good. <clears throat> and I know we're pastors, so they're probably like, well, they have to say this. But <laughs> before I was a pastor, I came to the realization. I came to the realization when I was just a part of the church that I don't want to build my own dream. I want to build God's dream. Mm-hmm. I want to build his church. And it's just like he said, Peter, you're the rock, and I'm going to build my church upon you. He didn't say... I'm going to build it on anything else or anyone else. He said, I'm going to build it on my followers. Mm. I'm going to build it on you and the gates of hell will not prevail. Mm. And I think where we can get to a point to make the church important is understand that this is a mandate from God that I am, when I'm devoted to Jesus, I'm devoted to his house. And when I'm devoted to his house, I will choose to let everything else subside and focus on building his church. And I don't have to have a degree. I don't have to, Mm -hmm. you know, be a pastor, but I'm going to make a decision to do that because I believe the most joyful people, the the people who have the greatest relationships are the ones in the local church. Yes, you can go get on a Facebook group and you can have a, a pickleball a, 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 a community and they're all great. Those communities are great. But I believe that the community that is the greatest is the believers, is the followers yeah. of Jesus. So, And I was going to add to that. I think, you know, maybe somebody's listening like, of course you guys want people to help build the church, your pastors. But like you were saying, like, it's not only what it does for us to build the church and the community um, of whatever church we're a part of. But like you were saying, the people who have leaned into building the church, what I have seen God do in their lives and in their families' lives, I could sit here all day and give you stories. And that's not a testament of, oh my gosh, your church is amazing. Look what you did. That is simply a byproduct of the obedience of doing what God's word calls us to do. Build my church. And it's like, he fills in the gaps of that i've seen families restored people get new jobs businesses burst so many and i'm sure you could answer so many stories too that when they stepped into building god's kingdom what god did in their life and in their family's life and the trickle down effect many generations after that i mean it's just absolutely mind-blowing and it's simply because of the obedience to that call and that command that's good and, and I think it just at the end of the day, we got to choose to, to be selfless over selfish, like mm-hmm. getting together as a group and, and you know, a, a, and we could be talking about God, but if it ends with us, we haven't fulfilled the great commission. Like yeah. it yeah. is, we're doing it so that we can go out and that we can reach more people, bring them back into the church where they can use their gifts, where they can be discipled, where they can grow in their faith. And now we are fulfilling a mission that is bigger than any of us. And I think it That's comes so down good. to that. Yeah. So if you're listening, the church is important, yeah, and it's important to be a part of it. 
And we have amazing churches here in South Florida. Potential Church is an amazing church. Me and Jamie served there for so long. And then we planted our church, One Name Church. And we're just here trying to reach South Florida. And wherever you find yourself listening to is get involved. Um, Don't make excuses. The devil wants to divide. But I think when we start to become unified and we start to become and saying, hey, this is the body that I need. I need to be a part of this. Um, you've heard it all here. God starts to do miraculous signs and wonders. Um, and I believe when you're devoted to the church over everything else, his His bride, you'll start to see things in your life change. So thank you for listening today. <clears throat> thank you for being a part of this Real Faith podcast. Hopefully this helped you. Yeah. We're so thankful for Pastor Tyler. We're honored to have you here. You. you want anything anything to say about <laughs> potential church or anything? Um, if you're looking for a home church, we've talked with, there's two great home <laughs> church, churches we've talked about here, One Name Church, Potential Church here in South Florida, and uh, we're committed to partnering with you to be everything God created you to be. So hopefully you were inspired and we love you. Come on. So thank you guys for listening and you can find this podcast on all of uh, TIU's channels and all of that kind of stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe to it or you follow or click the like button or whatever it is you got to do. Just make sure you get on there and share this with someone and we're going to continue to have real conversations about our faith and hopefully this bless you today. You guys have a great day and we love you.